Okay, and let's look at some examples of our tangents and cotangents in this tutorial. Example one, we've got the tangent of x over two. Now, this is a tangent function, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this quantity, this bx minus c part, this x divided by two, and I'm gonna set it equal to negative pi over two, and I'm gonna be setting it equal to positive pi over two. Again, those are the original two asymptotes for the tangent graph. I'm gonna solve these two equations to solve for this. I, of course, I multiply both sides by two to cancel that out, and I'll have x is equal to, these actually cancel out as well, negative pi, and the same step over here to solve, and I'm gonna have that x equals positive pi. These are my new vertical asymptotes. So let's graph those in. There's no reason to have changed my scales, so my fourth tick mark will be pi. If you want your eighth tick mark to be two pi, you can put that in. I'm gonna go over here to negative pi. I'm gonna go up to my one and my negative one, my normal scales. So I'm gonna graph my two new vertical asymptotes. The first one is here at negative pi and the second one here is at positive pi. So you can see that this has stretched the graph out a little bit. Now, what I like to do is understand that if you look at either one of the graphs, I'm looking at the tangent graph now uh, on your note sheet, the, the zero, the place where the tangent curve crosses the x-axis is exactly halfway between the, any two vertical asymptotes. So now I've divided into an upper half and a lower half. When I take this upper half and cut that in half again, that's when I'm gonna travel up to a one for the tangent curve. And in the lower half, if I cut that in half, I'm just visually cutting it in half to this and going down to a negative one. Those are really the only three points that I need to realize that this tangent graph is gonna curve like this. So it's really just cutting it in half, playing the cut it in half game. Once you have your two new vertical asymptotes, find exactly halfway for your zero, and then half of the upper half, and then half of the lower half, and put your one in your negative one. There's your tangent graph here. We can practice the domain, because I know that we should be practicing the domain. Domain is, uh, again, infinite restrictions. The set of all x such that x is not equal to. My first asymptote I consider to be this one, which is at the value of pi. So I'm going to say that x cannot be equal to pi. And then I'm going to add a multiple. I need to figure out how far away the next asymptote is. Well, I don't have another one over here, so I'm going to go backwards to this one. And I can count that out. That's exactly eight tick marks, or rather two pi. So I'm going to be adding a multiple of two pi. So I'll put two pi k. And there's my domain. Our second example, we have another tangent graph. I'm going to take this quantity, this 2x, and I'm going to set it equal to negative pi over 2, and I'm going to set it equal to positive pi over 2, same as example 1. I'm going to solve. This time I'm dividing by 2. You know what? Dividing by 2 doesn't make much sense if I'm dealing with fractions, so maybe multiplying by a half makes more sense. When I multiply by a half, I'm going to have x is equal to negative pi over 4. And when I multiply by a half over here, Basically the same exact work, but I get positive pi over 4. Here are our two new vertical asymptotes. Again, those are easy to find when I use my normal scales. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll go to negative pi. That helps me. I'll go up here to 1, and I'll go down here to negative 1. Okay, so let's graph these vertical asymptotes. One is at negative pi over 4, which is right here. And the other one is at positive pi over 4. So this graph is really squeezed in a little bit. Okay. There's other things going on here. Um, we have this negative 3. A is equal to a negative 3. Now, again, that's not called the, as, uh, excuse me, the um, amplitude, but it is still going to affect our graph. The negative is going to make us flip upside down. So instead of doing a curve that's going to look like this, like a tangent, it's going to actually do the reverse, and it's going to go three times as much. So maybe I'm still going to be fine. I, I'm still going to be stubborn and, and make my uh, tick marks, every two tick marks. Um, so I'll make my three right here, and my negative three will be down here. Some people 
don't like to go off the graph patch like this, so they will um, count a different way on the y-axis, and that's okay. I said that you, I'd give you leeway on that. So cutting the asymptotes right in half is where my zero is going to be, and there it is. When I cut the upper half in half, I'm actually at pi over 8, normally I'd be going up 1, but because of the negative, I'm going down, and because of the 3, I'm actually going down 3 units to there. Normally when I cut the lower half in half, I'd be going down, but in this case, because of the negative, I'm flipping and going in the opposite direction, and I'm going three times as much. So this, I'm going to try to curve this in so it doesn't look like a straight line, but because it's squeezed in so much, it's kind of tough. But I'll go ahead and do that. Just don't touch your asymptotes, of course. Let's do the domain. Again, infinite restrictions, all x such that x is not equal to the first asymptote I see, in, at least in the positive direction, is pi over 4. So it can't be equal to pi over 4. And then how often do the asymptotes repeat? Well, it's exactly two tick marks, which we know is pi over 2. So I'll add a multiple of pi over 2, and that will represent all of my vertical asymptotes and therefore my domain. We've got two more examples to look at. Example number three is for a cotangent. So this time when I take this quantity, this x divided by three, I'm going to be setting it equal to zero pi, and I'm going to be setting it equal to one pi. Those are the original asymptotes for the cotangent. When I solve these equations, I'm going to multiply by three, and I'm going to have x is equal to, well, it's still equal to 0. So 0 pi is still. And when I multiply this by 3, I will have x is equal to 3 pi. So these are my two new vertical asymptotes. Um, again, these are easy to find on my normal labels, so I will not change my scales. 1 pi, 2 pi, here's 3 pi. I will go up to a 1 and down to a negative 1. Let's dot in our new vertical asymptotes. This one is still at 0 pi. And then this one is all the way here at x equals 3 pi. So this is going to be stretched out a lot. OK. Um, the other thing is amplitude. Remember, there is no amplitude. But there still is a value of a. And a, in this case, is a 2. So it is going to go twice as tall. Now remember, cotangent graphs generally look like this, so I'm going to make sure that I go in that correct direction. Cutting in half game, I'm just going to be starting, I'm going to start cutting things in half. Halfway between one, 0 and 3 pi is exactly 1 and a half pi. So there's my 0. When I cut the upper half in half, you can either just count the tick marks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's three of them, 1, 2, 3, there's half. Or you can just visually see it. Uh, for cotangent, we go down, and we go two times as much this time because of the 2. Cutting the lower half in half, I'm right here. And this time, I go up to a 2. I'm going to try and curve this towards that vertical asymptote. Again, this is kind of tough because it's stretched out, I understand. But I will try to do the best to curve. Like, Yeah, we'll just do it like that. And there's our cotangent graph. Let's practice the domain. Our domain is a set of infinite restrictions. It's all the x's such that x is not equal to. My original asymptote is actually right here at 0 pi. I don't really need to say can equal 0 because I know I'm going to be adding something to it. And this time, we are 12 tick marks away, or rather 3 pi. So I'm just going to do a multiple of 3 pi, and that will describe my domain all x such that x is not equal to 3 pi k. You could say 0 pi plus 3 pi k, but please understand that that's the same thing as what I've written. And then our final example is a tangent. I'm going to take this whole quantity, the whole bx minus c part. This is 2x minus pi. And I'm going to set that, because we're back to tangent, equal to negative pi over 2 and equal to positive pi over 2. A little bit more involved are these equations. This time I have to add pi. If I add pi to negative 1 half pi, I'm at positive 1 half pi. And now I will multiply by a half to get rid of the 2. 
and I've got x is equal to pi over 4. So that's my first asymptote. Do the same exact math over here. We're going to add pi. If I take half of a pi and add two halves of a pi, I'm at three halves of the pi. And then when I multiply by one half to cancel out the two, I have x equals 3 pi over 4. So my two new vertical asymptotes are pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Again, no need to change our scales. There's 1 pi and 2 pi. I'm going to make my 1 where I normally do. And now let's dot in these vertical asymptotes. 1 is at pi over 4. That's the first tick mark. And 1 is at 3 pi over 4. That's the third tick mark. So you can see using this method where you set the, um, the bx minus c part equal to the two original asymptote values, doing this work actually does the shifting for us and does the period for us. So it's kind of nice being able to do it this way and then we just play the cut in half game. I'm going to do that right now, cut this in half, and I'm at 0, cut the top half in half, and I'm at 1, cut the bottom half in half, and I'm at negative 1, because there's nothing else going on here. There's my tangent curve, squeezed in a little bit. And one last domain to practice, all x such that x is not equal to, I pick the first asymptote that I see, which is pi over 4. And then I add the multiple of however far apart the asymptotes are, which is pi over 2. So pi over 2, k. That's not the best one. Let's do that again. OK. Hopefully you understand how to do these through these four graphs. If not, make sure you have some good questions for when we practice in class. And I will see you then.